All right, now let's make sure we got this right. That's the book. Is that the right book? That's the book we're working on now. It is indeed. Thank you very much. My love, Casey Cox. I think you're a wonderful dude. I love your books, but and you're not the only author that does this, but why do authors always do that whole, got me, and then there's a name, then got me. Um, I, I, I've done 300 books. I don't know what, I'm not even sure what day it is. Hi, hey. how are you? So welcome to story time. I'm John Solo. You are not. This is my fucking abode right here. And we're about to get started on this story. And I was in my little spiel. I was doing my, and Tracy pointed out that I had the wrong book. Just didn't I did the wrong book. I'm working on the wrong book today. I don't know. <laughs> I, they kind of blend after a while. Anyways, <clears throat> this is book two in the Casey Cox Vet Shop Boys series, which don't listen to me. I'm having kind of a rough morning, but this is a great book. They're hilarious. Uh, the first one was fantastic. It's today. It's February 19th to the day I'm working on this 2022. Um, I just did a, my one pickup line for the first one through Tantor. That should be out here in a few weeks. I would think I already recorded a story time for that one. Um, and this one, I'm not going to wait to, I am going to wait to post this story time video until closer to when it releases. That's probably gonna be a couple months from now, but you guys are really going to like this stuff. It's good shit. Anyways, uh, we're at chapter one, <clears throat> so no spoilers or anything. And these books are kind of standalone-ish. The characters do connect, but you can jump in at any point and just have fun with these. They're a fun rom-com romp. I think you're going to like it. So let's get into it here. One. Fulton. I glanced down at the half cupcake I'm holding and let out a smile. I don't like the way I say cupcake. Really, I don't like cupcakes. They just get in your beard and they're messy. Fulton. I glanced down at the half cupcake I'm holding and let out a smile. The icy blue frosting is brighter than the peaceful lake I'm perched in front of, but no match for the bright summer sky above me. It's the 25th of June, and I'm doing what's become a tradition of sorts. Every year for the last four years, I start the day by doing a half shift at Vet Shop Boys, quite possibly the best vet clinic in the state of Virginia, if I do say so myself. After wrapping up by about lunchtime, I head down to Brookhaven's finest bakery, where Mrs. Evans tries to outdo herself with the gorgeous cupcake creation which she slices in two and proceeds to give me half. Then I head out to Lake Somerset. It's on the outskirts of town, so it's less busy and definitely less touristy than other lakes and beaches this time of year, especially on a sunny, cloudless day like today. A few people mill around, but I've got my usual bin shawl to myself. See, when you share a birthday with one of the most famous figures in history, like, say, Jesus, it blows. Big time. Being a Christmas baby guarantees that what's meant to be your special day inevitably gets overshadowed. It's a hectic time of year, so people are already stressed and on edge. On top of the impossibility of actually having a birthday party on Christmas Day itself, most people also decide to gift bundle, which means you get one extra special gift to cover both occasions. It bugged me growing up. But now, as a sensible and mature 34 and a half year old, I've come to accept it. Hence, the half birthday, half cupcake, half workday vibe I've got going on today. Sure, it may sound a little weird to people who don't know me, and well, maybe it is, but that's just me. My name is Fulton Meyer, and I'm a corkaholic. I rifle through my backpack searching for a candle. When I find it, I carefully plop it right in the center of the neon blue icing. Would they ding you on I'm instead of I am? Yes. Repeat it then. Repeat where? The last sentence. I am a quirkaholic. All right. Thank you. Sure, it may sound a little weird to people who don't know me, and well, maybe it is, but that's just me. My name is... to people who don't know me and well maybe it is but that's just me my name is fulton meyer and i am a quirkaholic i rifle through my backpack searching for a candle when i find it i carefully plop it right in the center of the neon blue icing a bit of the sugary stuff lands on my finger and i scoop it up into my mouth my eyes drift shut 
Hmm. Mrs. Evans has really outdone herself this year. I pull out a lighter I bought at a gas station on the way out here, but before I light the candle, I close my eyes and think about my half-birthday wish. I suppose a tall, dark, and handsome stranger is out of the question. Funny how that's the thought the I suppose a tall, dark, and handsome stranger is out of the question. Funny how that's the first thought that bubbles up in my mind. For the most part, I'm perfectly happy being single, but ever since my best friend Noah got into a relationship with a great guy recently, and as genuinely happy as I am for both of them, a small part of me twinges with a long-repressed desire for something like what he's got. Someone to come home to. Someone to share life's ups, downs, and all-arounds with. Someone in his bed to hold him. Love him. Make love to him. I shake the thoughts out of my head. I, I can't have any of that. No guy wants me in a romantic way. Can't say I blame them, really. Underneath my left field personality in exquisite fashion sense, today I'm wearing a bright purple shirt with the words, if cats could text back, they wouldn't, emblazoned across it. The truth is, I'm damaged. Badly. Grossly. In such a horrific gay... In such a horrific gay, yeah. I'm damaged. <clears throat> Badly. Grossly. In such a horrific way that no guy could ever want to be with me... Besides, love ain't all sunshine and rainbows. My friend Gus is still recovering from getting cheated on. All sunshine and rainbows. My friend Gus is still recovering from getting cheated on at his own damn wedding. We've managed to get him out of his slack slanket. My friend Gus is still recovering from getting cheated. from getting cheated on at his own damn wedding. We managed to get him out of his slanket wearing. My friend Gus is still recovering from getting cheated on at his own damn wedding. We've managed to get him out of his slanket wearing, day drinking while watching daytime soaps phase and back into the real world again, but we've just replaced one monster with another. Now Gus is out partying like he's 28, and not his actual age of 48, almost every night of the week. We've devised a weekly roster to take turns going out with him. I was on duty last week. Noah is up this week, and next week it's Chase's turn. Speaking of Chase, he looks like he's got it all. He's a great guy. Good-looking, smart, loves animals, and is married to a wonderful woman, Julie. Yet they're going through hell trying to conceive. They're up to their third round of IVF, and it sounds like a hormone-laden nightmare. And an expensive one at that. Which just goes to show, love is hard. Too hard especially when you throw in the added complications I bring into the mix. I'm rethinking my half-birthday wish of a sexy stranger more and more with each passing second. So what else does that leave? What is it I do want? I close my eyes as if trying to summon the thoughts to me. A few ideas drift by. A long life for all of my eight cats. A never-ending supply of high-quality t-shirts on Etsy. Both good options, but is this really what I want my half-birthday wish to be? I drum my fingers against my leg before finally settling on just being happy. I know it's vague and not very original, but it's actually the thing I want the most at the moment. My life basically revolves around my cats, my work, and my friends. My cats and my job are fine, but two out of three of my closest friends aren't. Gus and Chase are going through some heavy shit, and maybe that's starting to rub off on me. I mean, it's been at least a month since I've earned a shut-up Fulton from the guys. That's how serious things have gotten. With my half-birthday wish sorted, I light the candle and sing a quick and quiet happy birthday to myself. No, I can't do that. <clears throat> Shut up, Fulton, from the guys. That's how serious things have gotten. With my half-birthday wish sorted, I light the candle and sing a quick and quiet happy birthday to myself. Closing my eyes, I make my wish as I blow it out. I rest the half cup cake on my knees as I rummage through my backpack for my headphones. There's only one thing that could be better than biting into this delicious creation, and that's savoring it while listening to Christmas carols. I know it's June, but well, what can I say? It wouldn't be my half birthday without Mariah Carey belting out a few timeless Christmas classics. I'm setting up the Bluetooth connection between my cell phone and the wireless headphones when a deep voice rumbles from my right. Why are you holding half a cupcake? The words startle me, 
and my headphones slip from my fingers. Worse, my knees jolt, sending my half cupcake rocketing into the air before gravity does its thing, slamming the sugary creation into the ground, frosting first. I bow forward, staring at the squished half cupcake. It's landed in a patch of grass and dirt, which only means one thing. It's R.I.P. time. That's when I spot two boots stepping in the frame. I thumb my glasses up my nose as I peer over at the black leather R13 combat boots. They're like a scarier version of the Doc Martens I used to wear during my vet As I peer over at the black leather R13 combat boots, they're like a scarier version of the Doc Martens I used to wear during my vet school days. The man's pants are a dappled gray, and as I slowly start to fold back up, my eyes continue tracing the hard lines of his body. Despite it being warm out, he's wearing a black biker jacket, a beanie, and tinted aviators. A russet beard covers his square jaw. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he'd... <coughs> and tinted aviators. A russet beard covers his square jaw. If I didn't know any better, I'd say he's trying to cover his face like he's going incognito or something. But it's what he does next that surprises the crap out of me. Without saying a word, he lifts his glasses and places them onto his beanie. I don't even have enough time to be dip up. And places them onto his beanie. I don't even have enough time to see what color his eyes are other than a dark shade of something, because before I know what's happening, He's dropped to his knees. With surgical care, he picks up the half cupcake, and then he starts blowing on it. It takes my brain a moment to register what on earth he's doing. Then it clicks into place. He's trying to dislodge the flecks of dirt that have settled into the blue icing. He's trying to bring it back to life. A chuckle catches in the back of my throat. This simple gesture from a complete stranger is oddly touching. Or just odd. It's too early to tell. Either way, I'm pleasantly intrigued. Do you think it's been more than three seconds? He asks in the same deep voice that startled me before, although this time there's a husky warmth to it. He glances up at me for a moment, and I can see his pinched expression before he returns to blowing on the half cupcake. I snicker at his question. I don't think that's an official rule, the whole three second thing, I remark. He stops mid-blow and faces me with a serious expression. Illibos. <clears throat> Mark. He stops mid-blow and faces me with a serious expression. It most certainly is. I don't know if it's the way his low voice rumbles in the air or how committed he is to what he's doing, but whatever it is, I feel my cock stirring. Weren't you taught about the 1924 Geneva Convention between humanity and the germ race? He continues, his lips lifting around the edges. I shake my head, slightly shell-shocked, and getting more turned on with every word that comes out of this man's mouth. If outlined, that should any food matter. Hmm, fine. Word that comes out of this man's mouth. It outlined that should any food matter fall or be dropped onto an unintended surface, humans were granted a three-second grace period before germs could descend. I'm grinning. Humans were granted a three-second grace period before germs could descend. I'm grinning so hard now I can feel it in my cheeks. Also, I'm pretty sure I'm fully hard as well. There's something about his silliness that reminds me of, well... <laughs> Me. He gets to his feet, still holding the half cupcake in his hand. I stand, too. Bishop Turner. He extends his free hand. I realize in the nick of time that my palms have gone clammy, so I quickly brush them down the sides of my khaki shorts. Ah, Fulton Meyer. Our hands clasp. The feel of his rough, calloused hand sends a zip of heat shooting up my spine. Eventually, he takes his hand away. I'm very sorry about your half cupcake, Fulton. I want you to know that I will be taking this matter all the way to the International Supreme Court, and I will not rest until little Bluey here gets the justice they deserve. There is so much yumminess to unpack in that sentence. My brain is tripping over itself, not knowing where to start. The way my name fell off his tongue was such a smooth timbre. His joke about an International Supreme Court? 
I'm 99% sure that's a made-up thing, right? <laughs> and him not gendering the cupcake. I'll be still my woke beating heart. His head dips slightly when he speaks next. You still didn't answer my question. Question? He asked a question. Shit, Fulton, drain some of that blood from your cock because your brain needs it right about now. Bishop shoots me a smile. He's one of those guys who have those big, wide smiles. It takes over his face and soaks into what I can now see are two dark chocolate eyes. He must be able to sense that I need prompting, so he repeats his original question. Why are you holding half a cupcake? Oh, right, that. I clear my throat and drop my gaze. It's my half birthday. I answer a little sheepishly. I'm not hugely embarrassed by it, but it's not something I go around announcing to the world either. Hey. It comes out softly, yet like a command I can't ignore. My eyes lift. Bishop has got one of those perfectly symmetrical faces split in the middle by a prominent nose. His eyebrows run thick over those deep brown eyes of his. His pillowy lips stretch as he asks, You're a Christmas baby? I nod. You got it. I expect to see, well, actually, I don't know what I'm thinking he'll do next. <laughs> Maybe a joke? Politely excuse himself? Stop. Slowly, but... Make, 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 make a joke. Maybe a joke? <clears throat> I expect to see, well, actually, I don't know what I'm thinking he'll do next. <laughs> Maybe a... I expect to see, well, actually, I don't know what I'm thinking he'll do next. <laughs> Make a joke? <laughs> Politely excuse himself? Slowly back the fuck away from a 34 and a half year... I'm gonna have to go back to the beginning of that. You got it. I expect to see... Actually, I don't know what I'm thinking he'll do next. Make a joke? Politely excuse himself? Slowly back the fuck away from a 34 and a half year old Mariah Carey listening freak show? A static heat simmers in the air between us, but I tell myself I'm imagining it. Any second now, this guy's going to turn around and leave. Brookhaven's not a huge city, but it's also not small enough of a place where everyone knows each other. Still, he doesn't look familiar. He's probably just passing through. Maybe he stopped by to use the restroom on his way to somewhere more exciting. Drink? Damn, he's been talking to me all this time and I missed it all. Except for the last word. Bishop folds his arms across his chest. You haven't been listening to me at all, have you? My chest threads with panic, but when I see his lopsided grin, I'm relieved he's not upset or offended. I readjust my glasses on my nose. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. I drifted for a moment there. Too bad. He steps in a little closer, the whiff of a woody, scented cologne teasing my nostrils. You just missed my apology and my invitation. Too bad. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah. I drifted for a moment there. Too bad. He steps in a little closer, the whiff of a witty scented cologne teasing my nostrils. You dismissed my apology and my invitation. I run my tongue across the top of my teeth. Any chance of a do-over? Why is my voice suddenly so shy sounding? I think I may be nervous. But why? Bishop's eyes consume me as he replies, What I said was that I'm sorry about ruining your half cupcake, and since it's also your half birthday, I feel doubly bad about it. I smile, enjoying the way he plays with words. It's subtle and smart and understated. And the invitation? I ask, allowing a speck of hope to flicker in my chest. At that, Bishop cocks his head to the side, licks his lower lip, and asks, can I buy you a half drink? And that would be chapter one of Got Me... Got Me Wishing. Just had to look again, just to make absolutely certain. <laughs> yeah, we got the title right here. Got Me Wishing, book two in the Vet Shop Boys series by Casey Cox. This is through Tantor Publishing, so it should be out in a couple months, I would think. Somebody told me that pre-order or something or release of the first one comes on March 15th, so there is that. Um, I won't be posting the story time until uh, closer to the release of this book, so I'm now working in the past. So have fun, y'all. I will see you soon. Peace out.